ಎಲ್ರಿಗೂ ಗುಡ್ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಇವತ್ತು ನಾವೇನ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಿದೀವಪ್ಪ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಮಕ್ಕಳಿಗೆ ಹೊಸ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಟೆಂತ್ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡರ್ಡ್ ಎಸ್ ಎಸ್ ಎಲ್ ಸಿ ಟೆಂತ್ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡರ್ಡ್ ಗೆ ಸಂಬಂಧಪಟ್ಟಂತೆ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಮೀಡಿಯಂ ಆಲ್ರೆಡಿ ಕೆಲವು ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಅನ್ನ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ಮಾಡಿದ್ವಿ ಈಗ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಿರುವಂತ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ವೆರಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಲೈಫ್ ಪ್ರೊಸೆಸ್ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ಲೈಫ್ ಪ್ರೊಸೆಸ್ ಅನ್ನ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡೋಕ್ಕಿಂತ ಮುಂಚೆ ಏನ್ಪ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಓನ್ಲಿ ಹೈಲೈಟ್ ಆಗಿ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಕಾನ್ಸೆಪ್ಟ್ ಏನ್ ಮಾಡ್ತೀವಿ ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಡಿಸ್ಕಸ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಹೋಗ್ತೀವಿ ಹಂಗಾದ್ರೆ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡೋಣ ಲೈಫ್ ಪ್ರೊಸೆಸ್ ಅನ್ನ ವಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಡ್ಯೂ ಮೀನ್ ಬೇರೆ ಲೈಫ್ ಪ್ರೊಸೆಸ್ ದ ಮೇಂಟೆನೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯಾನಿಸಮ್ ಇಸ್ ಎಸೆನ್ಷಿಯಲ್ ಈವನ್ ಇಫ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಮೂವಿಂಗ್ ರಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಆರ್ ಈವನ್ ಸ್ಲೀಪಿಂಗ್ ಓಕೆ ಮೇಂಟೆನೆನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಲಿವಿಂಗ್ ಆರ್ಗ್ಯಾನಿಸಮ್ ಇಸ್ ಎಸೆನ್ಷಿಯಲ್ ಈವನ್ ಇಫ್ ದೇ ಆರ್ ಮೂವಿಂಗ್ ರೆಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಆರ್ ಈವನ್ ಸ್ಲೀಪಿಂಗ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ವೈ ಟು ಟು ಮೇಕ್ ಅ ಮೇಂಟೆನೆನ್ಸ್ ಓಕೆ ದೇ ಕ್ಯಾರಿ ಅ ಲೈಫ್ ಪ್ರೊಸೆಸ್ ದೇ ಕ್ಯಾರಿ ಅ ಲೈಫ್ So what do you mean by life process? The process which together perform the function, maintenance of a life are called as a life process. Are called as a life process. The process which together perform the function of maintenance of life. Hmm. To maintenance of life. To what? Uh, sustain a life. To lead a life. Whatever the process they carry, they have, those processes are called as a life process. Next. then uh, the important life processes are nutrition what respiration circulation excretion these are the example what examples of essential life processes okay these are all what life process nutrition is also what a part of life process respiration is also part of life process circulation is also part of life process okay these are what examples of essential of a life process if we see a strong what a uh, plant okay in plant what uh, stomata are there do, do, do stomata what they absorb they absorb carbon dioxide from environment okay and uh, what they give out environment in uh, in the process of photosynthesis what oxygen that's the respiration process in them for example nutrition here panda what eating some leaves okay that's nutrition then what uh, for example if you see a horse it's what respiration or taking in oxygen and giving out carbon dioxide so what uh, here what what you do, whatever the nutrition respiration circulation excretion these are the examples of a essential life process if we take uh, what uh, nutrition okay nutrition starts from ingestion ingestion taking food into mouth then afterwards it digested in a small intestine and large intestine that's called as digestion then what of the digested food is absorbed by the small villi is present in what uh, our uh, small intestine uh, with the help of diffusion what uh, they mix with the blood and the blood carry the what food particles into each and every cell okay the cell what uh, use that food so this is called as absorption then after that elimination the whatever the waste is produced from this food that waste is excreted from a body that's called as the elimination that's called as the elimination next uh, in if you see a bacteria it's a unicellular organism okay so it's uh, sometimes it's not unicellular also it's a pro- prokaryotic organism in unicellular organism all these processes are carried out by the single cell what those are processes i told you nutrition ex- what uh, uh, what excretion or circulation like the all these things in multicellular organism well developed system are present to carry out the process well developed system to carry respiratory what a respiration respiratory system to carry what a, a nutrition okay what a digestive system is to carry circulation what a blood and blood vessels heart these are the organs and so so what a, in multicellular organism well developed systems are present to carry out processes to carry out processes next nutrition the process of acquiring food that is needed for a nourishment and what a sustenance of the organism that's called as a nutrition for example here crocodile out catching a fish it's a it's mode of nutrition for example plants okay they making a photosynthesis in presence of the sunlight by absorbing a carbon dioxide from the environment and what water from a root that's its nutrition 
then if you see a lizard what it catch it catching the infant it eats nutrition so there are two main modes of a nutrition one is autotrophic and another one is a heterotrophic whatever the organism produce their own food that's called as autotrophic and whatever the organism depend what depends on other organism for food those are called as a heterotrophic the next okay heterotrophic nutrition has a subtypes okay heterotrophic nutrition means whatever the organism depend on other organism for food those are called as heterotrophic then in heterotrophic we made a what two subtypes what are those what are uh, what, uh, some subtypes what are those hollow, what holozoic saprophytic and parasitic what type of a nutrition for example holozoic whatever the organism depend on other organism for a food for example human being holozoic saprophytic whatever the organism they take a food from dead and decaying materials those are called as saprophytic then parasitic whatever the organism what uh, depends on other organisms uh, what uh, they, what uh, lead a life in a host those are called as a parasitic organisms so parasitic mode of nutrition here mosquito it is life in other plants it's what uh, what uh, uh, parasitic mode of nutrition see human beings holozoic mode of nutrition uh, whatever the mushrooms growing on dead and decaying materials those are called as a saprophytic mode of nutrition next autotrophic mode of nutrition if an organism can nourish itself by making its own food by using sunlight or chemicals is called as a autotrophic nutrition okay. what uh, the plants make their own food with the help of sunlight okay. those are called or what uh, some organism with the, by using uh, some chemicals okay these are what uh, um, aquatic animals okay with the help of some chemicals they prepare their own food those are called as autotrophic nutrition then a uh, plants photosynthesize use a uh, what uh, light energy are called phototrophs whatever the organism what produce their own food with the help of sunlight those are called as a phototrophs those are called as a phototroph then few bacteria use a chemicals to derive energy are called chemotrophs okay some organisms what few bacteria use a chemicals to derive energy are called what chemotrophs okay for example rhizobium okay next photosynthesis photosynthesis is an important process by which food is formed okay how photosynthesis occur in our environment okay if you see a plant okay the leaves of a plant contain a chlorophyll okay the chlorophyll reacts with the sunlight it reacts with the sunlight because the chloroplasts are there in that chloroplast a pigment is there that's called as a chlorophyll that chlorophyll reacts with the sunlight by absorbing carbon dioxide and it also absorbs water from a roots water from a, a roots and uh, they carry photosynthesis and whenever they carry root photosynthesis with the help of a photosynthesis they liberate oxygen to environment very very important life leading gas so they liberate oxygen and also they prepare their own food in the form of what starch or fat okay that's called as a glucose c6h12o6 the plants make what the plants make food using the sunlight and the water which provides nourishment to the other organism and then follows other organism and then follows okay for example light is the initial energy source for most communities okay on earth each and every organism depends on sunlight or directly or sometimes indirectly then autotrophs whatever the organism they produce their own food i told you okay synthesize own organic molecules those are called as autotrophs heterotrophs for example animals okay ingest organic materials whatever the plant produce a food that food is eaten by hmm, heterotrophs okay next the plants make a food by using the sunlight and water which provides nourishment to the other organisms and then follows next okay uh, pigment is present in leaves i told for you that's a chlorophyll chlorophyll present in green parts of the plant body absorbs a light energy they absorb what see here sunlight is there they absorb a light energy the light energy is used to precipitate water into hydrogen and oxygen this is the main stage of a photosynthesis the light energy is used to split a water into hydrogen and oxygen this is the main stage of a photosynthesis see what uh, carbon dioxide whatever the small tiny pores are present in plants those tiny pores what uh, 
absorbs a carbon dioxide and what they liberate they liberate a oxygen now we are going to discuss what hydrogen is then used to reduce carbon dioxide into carbohydrates okay hydrogen is used to reduce carbon dioxide into carbohydrates typically glucose because we already studied in the in process of photosynthesis okay sunlight is needed carbon dioxide also needed and water from uh, what roots also needed all they react and what they produce they produce the glucose this is crystal o2 it is in the form of sugar and oxygen o2 it is uh, what is released to the environment okay then next uh, uh, this is the structure of stomata very important uh, what uh, uh, stomata uh, it is a double layered membrane outer membrane and inner mem membrane inside the what a uh, stomata dna is there okay stoma and gland are very important things okay uh, they are active to sunlight and uh, dim light then uh, what uh, uh, plastoglobules are there in where inside the stomata ribosomes are there okay then uh, starch content is there inside the stomata okay and uh, whatever you are seeing here what uh, green color structures those green color structures are what chloroplasts in cell chloroplasts in where cell then chlorophyll is essential for photosynthesis and stomata to facilitate intake of a what carbon dioxide okay uh, now we are going to discuss what uh, transverse section of a leaf okay uh, it's what upper layer one protective layer is there that's called as a cuticle then it's made uh, what made with time then uh, the upper layer is called as the epidermis then uh, what uh, parenchyma polycyte parenchymas are there spongy parenchymas are there then uh, mesophyll is there then uh, what lower part is called as a what upper layer is called as a epidermis lower layer it is also made up of epidermis and uh, on the surface of a leaf guard cells okay and stomatal pores are there for opening and closing of a stomata then in between uh, air whatever the cells are there air sacs are there in between them okay then uh, vascular bundles are there vascular bundle of a xylem phloem and bundle sheath okay whatever the mixture of all this is the element phloem and uh, whatever the green structures are there those are called as the what chloroplasts they are called as what chloroplast next stomata stomata are pores on the leaves that help in exchange of gases okay they are mostly found on the underside of the leaf each what stoma is guarded by guard cells which control the opening and closing of a pores here this is a closed stomata this is a open stomata okay then uh, stomata are helpful to what uh, 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 take in carbon dioxide and give out oxygen okay and these are the what uh, vein and veins and veinlets okay next the water content of a guard cell okay responsible for their opening and closing for example what uh, with the help of a diffusion whatever the inside the cell water is present it's entering inside the cell means it's what the stomata is open that's a what open stomata and if a water content of inside the whatever the cell is there with the help of diffusion it's what moving outside then what the stomata closes with the help of movement of a water stomata makes its process which process opening and closing of guard cells opening and closing of what guard cells okay see they are being given with carbon dioxide what enters to the plant body and oxygen comes out of the plant body okay the next oh, saprophytic mode of nutrition some organism feed on dead and decaying organic matter this mode of a nutrition is called saprophytic mode of nutrition okay whatever the mushrooms grow on uh, what uh, wood those are what those who carry what saprophytic mode of mode of, mode of nutrition the food is partially digested outside the body and then it is absorbed example fungi and fungi are saprophytes the food is partially digested outside the body and then it is absorbed example fungi are saprophytes 
Next, parasitic mode of nutrition. Parasitic mode of nutrition, some organisms feed on the expenses of another organism and, and in turn causing it harm. This is called a parasitic mode of nutrition. Whatever the organism lead life on another organism, that's what parasitic mode of nutrition. For example, what, uh, what is the viral or fungal attack on plants? Or what, uh, what some other organism, what eat other organism? What uh, organism live on the body or in the body of a host organism and derive the nutrients directly from the host? Example, leech is an what ectoparasite. Ectoparasite, okay, it uh, what uh, suck the blood from surface of the body. That's why it's an ecto. Endo inside the body. Endo inside. For example, ascaris. Ascaris. Okay. Uh, they lead a life in our small intestine. So ascaris is a endoparasite. And cascuta is a plant parasite. See here. Cascuta is here. It's a plant. But uh, parasite. Cascuta. Okay. And this is leech. Leech. Endoparasite. Okay. And uh, sorry, uh, leech ectoparasite. And uh, what? Uh, ascaris endoparasite. Next, holozoic mode of nutrition. It's a nutrition in which organisms take food directly and uh, then digest and absorb it. That's called as a holozoic mode of nutrition. For example, what uh, amoeba, paramecium, euglena, whatever they lead a life in uh, what uh, dirty water. Where they are, they are uh, what inside the water. Whenever the food comes nearest to their body, uh, they take inside the food and they digest. That's called as a holozoic type of a nutrition. For example, in amoeba, paramecium, birds which is human beings for example bird few birds they catch a fish and they eat okay this is called as a what holozoic mode of nutrition next nutrition amoeba amoeba it's by a holozoic mode of nutrition it engulf the food particle using the pseudophobia okay the process is called as a what phagocytosis the process is called as a phagocytosis the engulf food get enclosed in a food vacuum see for example what happens? This is amoeba. Here, what uh, starch food material is there? It's uh, near to the body. Then, what what it will do? It will do with the help of pseudophobia. Yeah, it can what, uh, in, uh, engulf the food material and it take inside the body. Uh, whenever it takes inside the body, uh, what a uh, food vacuole? What digest the food and after digestion, the food what again uh, come to corners of the body and thrown outside. Okay, uh, this is the microscopic view of what paramecium how it engulf the food okay it's what this type of um, what um, uh, nutrition is called as a phagocytosis what phagocytosis okay next as the food vacuole passes through the cytoplasma where inside the body of amoeba cytoplasma is there digestion absorption and assimilation takes place okay then when the food vacuole opens the outside the ejection of undigested food takes for example after digesting food after digesting food okay it brings what uh, corners to the uh, corners of the body it's called uh, after uh, assimilation it comes to uh, outside the body sometime it cuts its body parts okay that's called the ejection then nutrition in humans humans are what omnivores they can eat plant based food as well as animal based food that's why they are what omnivores being a more complex humans have a very complicated nutrition system why because in their in them esophagus is there stomach is there liver is there gallbladder is there pancreas is there duodenum is there then what this is a column ileum okay rectum anus small intestine large intestine like these important parts are there in your exam sometimes they ask what to draw a neat label diagram of a digestive system let's see the digestive system has an eliminatory canal and associated digestive glands which together function to nourish a body. See, what, whatever our digestive system is there, it's eliminatory canal. Okay, it starts from, it starts from where? Mouth and uh, it ends in where? It ends anus up to there. Okay, whatever the processes will occur, that's called as a what uh, uh, digestion and whatever the canal is there, that canal is called eliminatory canal. The next four stages that is ingestion, 
digestion, absorption and adhesion takes place in alimentary tube. Induction from mouth, digestion in small intestine, absorption with the help of villus or carry to blood, and adhesion with the help of anus, the food, waste food what uh, thrown out from the body. That's called as adhesion. So if we see here what a uh, 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 okay, uh, food ingested through mouth, okay, and then whatever the digestive system is, the digestion will occur. And after that, a small intestine contains what uh, thing like projection projections to the called as a what a villi villi absorb the food. And after absorption, whatever the waste will rem remains that waste will go out from body with uh, what adhesion with the adhesion excreted through hands. Then see uh, ingestion taking food into body it's called as a ingestion. Digestion breaking down food is called as a what digestion. Absorption, moving food into each and every cell with the help of blood, it is called absorption. Assimilation, making a food part of the cell. Okay, then elimination, removing the unused food or waste food, it is called elimination. Then assimilation of food. Assimilation of food takes place in the whole body. Assimilation of food takes place in the where? whole body. Then, uh, what is this diagram is a very familiar diagram. They ask in our exam. Okay, we have to see here first parts. This is a mouth or mouth cavity, then tongue. Okay, then three types of glands are there. Those are called as the salivary glands, carotid, sublingual, and submandibular. These are the what three, three types of salivary gland. Okay, this is called in uh, our neck region. Pharynx is there. Okay, pharynx is a what uh, what uh, single opening for uh, food pipe and wind pipe, and this is the stomach. Then after that. Uh, what a liver okay uh, after liver gall bladder then the here pancreas is there okay uh, then small part of the spleen then uh, uh, the whatever the food after gall bladder where it goes it goes to small intestine uh, the base of the small intestine is a duodenum then uh, the food enters to where uh, small intestine small intestine uh, uh, what uh, several convoluted or tube like structure is there then large intestine it is connected to large intestine whenever wherever it is connecting to large intestine that is called as a jejunum then uh, what another one part uh, sorry uh, not in its ileum uh, where it uh, uh, what uh, the convoluted part of a small intestine is called jejunum then uh, large intestine is there large intestine uh, whatever the here transverse structure is there, it's called as transverse column. Then uh, this is called as ascending column. This is called as a descending column. And uh, what, uh, whatever the uh, appendix is there, the upper part of appendix is called sigmum. Then uh, uh, sigmoid column is there. Uh, um, before the waste is go out from the body, what uh, part is there? That's rectum. Then uh, whatever in whenever we are a monkey that time. In our us, uh, one tail is there. That tail is now only a remained part. That's the appendix. Then uh, it's anal canal. Then uh, whatever the food will go outside from body, it's the anus. Then eliminatory canal in human is a long tail. It starts with the mouth and it ends with the anus. It starts with the mouth. It ends with the anus. The esophagus. Okay, this part whatever there is there, this is called esophagus. The esophagus. Okay, uh, it is connected to what a stomach, small intestine, and large intestine are the parts of the eliminatory canal. Esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine. These are the parts of a eliminatory canal. Okay, uh, whatever we discussed structure, it's the same structure is here. The next in mouth, the food is what are broken into smaller particles by the teeth, smaller particles by the teeth. And mixed with the saliva from the salivary glands from the salivary glands three pair of salivary glands are there what are those we already whenever we discussed this what are structures that time we discussed whenever we see our uh, what uh, uh, permanent thick structure okay then incisors uh, incisors are in front region okay at that time uh, age of seven years they grow uh, some people in uh, what, whatever the incis lateral incisors are there they grow at, at the age of eight then canines, okay, canines, see here, they are very sharp, and canines at the age of 11, they grow, okay, then 
अपना प्रीमोलर्स प्रीमोलर्स एट द एज ऑफ इलेवन दे ग्रो देन सेकेंड प्री मोलर्स एट द एज ऑफ ट्वेल्व टू थर्टीन दे ग्रो मोलर्स एट द एज फर्स्ट मोलर्स आर सिक्स टू सेवन ईयर्स दे ग्रो सेकेंड मोलर्स ट्वेल्व टू थर्टीन एज दे ग्रो एंड थर्ड मोलर्स दिज आर कॉल्ड विजडम टू सेवेंटीन टू ट्वेंटी फाइव टू सिक्स दे ग्रो ओके दीज आर द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ टीथ ओके नेक्स्ट Saliva contains the enzyme salivary amylase. The salivary amylase converts what um, maltose into maltose. That we also calls what starch into maltose. So what starch are maltose? Uh, what salivary gland converts it into maltose? And the pH of the salivary gland is six point eight. Okay. And the three types of a glands I told for you is the parotid gland. Uh, sublingual gland and some mandibular gland where they are, they are present in uh, upper and lower part of our molars when it mixes with which one the saliva okay uh, it is a semi liquid state of a food then it enters through pharynx pharynx uh, common passage for what food pipe and wind pipe then epiglottis a sound producing thin layer then is the figure trachea okay trachea you see here is the trachea okay next food passes through the esophagus into stomach okay this is the structure of esophagus okay uh, what this is longitudinal structure this is a transverse structure okay whenever food is traveling in esophagus okay it undergo a peristaltic movement okay the movement called as a peristalsis Peristalsis, the contraction and relaxation movement of a esophagus is called as a peristalsis movement. We think that our food is only chewed well and it is digested in mouth, but uh, what it also undergo uh, what a grinding process in where uh, in our trachea also in esophagus also because continuous rhythmic contraction and relaxation occurs where uh, in our esophagus that is called as a peristalsis. Okay, then next. In stomach, okay. In stomach, the gastric glands produce gastric juice, which contains the uh, enzyme pepsin, hydrochloric acid, and mucus. Okay. Inside here, uh, whatever the thin layer is that here, what uh, what a sticky substance is that that's called as a mucus. Okay. It is made up of epithelial cells. Okay. Then this is the structure of what our stomach. HCl pH is one point two to two point five. Why? Because it's acidic in nature. It contains hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid makes the uh, medium acidic and helps the activation of pepsin. Okay, hydrochloric acid it is produced in our stomach. It makes the medium acidic and helps in the activation of pepsin. Then pepsin breaks down the proteins. How it breaks down the proteins? Okay, pepsinogen reacts with the hydrochloric acid produced in stomach. What it converts pepsinogen into pepsin and protein. Then pepsin and protein both they react to form a protease and peptone. Protease and peptone. A mucus protects the walls of the stomach from the action of the acid. Okay, see it, it's an inner layer of uh, our esophagus. Okay, then here hydrochloric acid whatever the produced. Okay, that hydrochloric acid start to react with the inner lining of uh, our stomach. Then we feel uh, hungry. Then the food passes into the small intestine through a what pyrrolic spinnaker, okay? Where here whatever the what uh, muscles are there, those are called as a pyrrolic spinnaker. This is the structure of stomach. Next, okay. What is what given over in depth, but we have to discuss for how much requires for us that much only we have to discuss it. Small intestine. Small intestine is not small. Small intestine of herbivores is longer. Okay, uh, this is a herbivorous rabbit, and this is a carnivorous fox. Compared to a small intestine of a herbivorous and small intestine of a carnivorous, what herbivorous small intestine is longer one, and uh, what carnivorous small intestine is shorter one because herbivorous whatever they eat a food, okay, in the form of leaf or grass. That leaf or grass contains the cellulose to digest the cellulose. It's a complex food. Okay, to digest that uh, cellulose, it requires some more time. More time means uh, the whatever the small intestine is, it's a longer one. 
and uh, what uh, whatever the carnivores they eat a flesh okay for uh, what digesting a flesh over more time that's why they have what what they have they have a shorter small intestine that small intestine in carnivores what uh, small intestine in carnivores short why because to, they want to digest the flesh easily digested flesh next the food is mixed with bile from liver and a proteatic juice from the pancreas okay uh, see uh, this is our liver okay liver produces a bile okay that's called as a bile juice and uh, what pancreatic juice is also produced here okay, because pancreas produce the insulin and glucagon two types of uh, juices okay those are called as a pancreas bile breaks down fat into smaller globules bile breaks down into fats into what smaller globules okay and further they undergo for emulsification okay uh, we have seen already some next pancreatic juice contains uh, enzyme trypsin and lipase pancreatic juice contains the enzymes trypsin and lipase the protease are endopeptides digest proteins are polypeptides then proteins are converted into peptides peptides are converted into amino acids in where in our small intestine then amylase uh, in our mouth whatever the salivary glands are there they produce a, what amylase they convert the starch into maltose maltase into maltose and here once again the pancreatic juice also produce amylase that digest sugars it converts the starch into maltose the next one nucleus we are going to discuss nucleus digest dna and rna nucleic acid turns into nucleosides then trypsin break down the proteins and uh, lipase break down the fats trypsin break down the proteins and lipase breaks down the fats then bile from a liver okay oh, what it will do it will do what uh, lipase digests the fats and bile what bile uh, salts emulsify the fats then whatever the dietary fat triglycerides are there there will those are converted into monoglycerides fatty acids monoglyceride fatty acids okay this is the part what small intestine okay this is the part called as what small intestine then in the small intestine the glands of the wall of the small intestine produce a intestinal juice the enzyme of the intestinal juice converts the carbohydrates into glucose fats into fatty acids and glycerol and pro what proteins into amino acids okay this is the conversion uh, occurs in where in your small intestine okay this is the stomach this is the what the basal part of a small intestine is called the duodenum then uh, convoluted part of a small intestine is called jejunum then uh, whatever the small intestine can what connects to large intestine that part is called as a ileum and uh, what appendix upper part is called as a cecum the walls of the small intestine has a several finger like projections called villi having the blood vessels so see what whatever the structure you are seeing here convoluted structure that cut through structure what uh, made with the what uh, these finger like structures are called villi where they are present they are present in our small intestine and they absorb food what uh, digested food uh, and what they are, they are connected to blood vessels or to, with the help of diffusion the food reaches to each and every cell it helps to increase the surface area for the absorption of digested food for the absorption of what digested food okay they are like finger like projections next the digested food is absorbed by the blood and transported to cells of the body okay this is the structure of a large intestine okay then this is what anus uh, important parts we already discussed important parts what we already discussed then next the undigested food passes into large intestine where it passes it passes into large intestine then water is absorbed in large intestine here water is absorbed the waste material is stored in rectum okay here it's rectum a small part whatever the tube like structure is there that's called the rectum the waste material is stored in a rectum what later removed through the anus this is the anus here later it's removed through anus okay the movement is regulated by anal sphincter okay the movement is here whatever the muscle types are there those are called as the anal sphincter next 
the food taken during the nutrition used to provide energy to various life processes okay and uh, what uh, all living organism including plants receive their energy required for their survival from a chain of a chemical reactions called respiration then uh, what uh, in uh, respiration where whatever the we what inhale air in that inhaled air oxygen is there it is diffused through blood and what blood uh, oxy in the form of oxy will hemoglobin reaches to each and every part of our body each and every cell in those cells mitochondria are there those mitochondria utilize this oxygen and uh, in the form of atp they provide energy and what this oxygen is also supplied to where to our nerve cells or neurons okay they, are, uh, they require some more what oxygen because they are highly active they perform a uh, 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 what uh, complex uh, what uh, works cellular respiratory complex okay then whatever the respiration is there okay uh, maybe in this video goes to a lengthiest one that's why respiration in one clip and excretion excretion in both uh, plant and animal you have to discuss in animal or maybe what uh, this life process i will discuss with you in three parts part 1 part 2 part 3 this is the part 1 up to respiration uh, remaining things you have to discuss in next class hopefully these videos are helpful for you whatever the uh, what diagrams are there they are more what useful for you okay uh, take use of this uh, uh, simple classes and uh, if you feel these are useful uh, share to your friends okay in groups